2019 and 2020 had been rather quiet years for Audi in India, with very few launches and successive year-on-year -year decline in sales. But it looks like that had just been a build-up for 2021, where Audi saw something of a revival with a slew of new launches and one of its best sales numbers in the last four to five years. While looking to keep that success going, Audi is bringing back a model that's been missing from its lineup since the implementation of BS6. Yes, we're talking about the Q7 SUV and it's finally here on Indian shows. What's in store for us? Let's find out. Before we begin, here's a little reminder. Enjoying the content on our channel? Then do hit those like, share and subscribe buttons to be notified the instant Carwali puts up a new video. Also, what do you think of the new Audi Q7? Once you watch our video, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. This Audi Q7, when launched in India, will be offered in two trim levels, Technology and Premium Plus. Both versions get a 3-litre V6 petrol engine producing 340 bhp and 500 nm of torque and metered to an 8-speed automatic transmission and also gets Audi's legendary Quattro all-wheel drive system. For all the details on this new Q7, do visit our website carvalet.com. The most significant change to this updated Audi Q7 is the grille. It's what Audi calls its single-frame grille, which is basically one large unit with chrome elements and uh, lots of vertical louvers. It really adds a, a muscular element to the appearance of the car. The other new element are of course these updated matrix LED headlamps which uh, for this facelifted model is available on the technology variant. Uh, you get LED projectors and these pattern like LEDs that move inwards when you switch on the indicators. At a length of just little over 5 meters, the Audi Q7 is in no way a small car and this facelifted model hasn't changed much in profile and which means that if you see the car out in public, you're definitely not going to miss it. Highlights here include this running board, uh, this bit on the door that has the word Quattro written on it, as well as the design for the 19-inch alloy wheels, which uh, in this case are specific to the technology variant. The most significant change to the rear of this updated Audi Q7 is this large chrome strip running under the lights. Uh, it wasn't there before and now adds a really premium touch to what is already quite an expensive car. Another major change is of course the design of the tail lamps. They are now full matrix LED units and have this arrow-like pattern that moves inward when you press the brake. There was never a question of the Q7 matching its rivals in terms of size or prints, but the design had been around for much longer than the rivals and thus this update, if a bit late, has done enough to put Q7 back in the appearance game. Now, while the exterior changes to this uh, updated Q7 might not be those many, once you step inside the cabin, you instantly notice that Audi has spent a big part of its budget in the update for the Q7 inside the cabin. Uh, once you get in, you notice that it's a beige and black affair and the dashboard has this giant slab of gloss black plastic which lends a really premium appeal but in the long run will become a fingerprint magnet as is the case with gloss black plastics in most places. There's also, also silver inserts all around, like here on the center console, around this third screen as well as on the dashboard itself. Uh, in terms of uh, layout, elements and ergonomics, not all that much has changed. Everything falls easily to hand, everything is easily accessible, everything feels nice to touch and is easy to use. Now, if you look on the center console, one of the things that's not here is the uh, thing that has been around in a lot of Audi cars for a long time which is your MMI dial that was used to control the screen that's been eliminated now because this has now become a touch screen and in fact uh, Audi has gone for a completely new setup which in this case are three screens like this uh, this one right in front of me on the right side is the virtual cockpit which is uh, it's actually the Audi Q7 was the first car in India to debut the virtual cockpit it's a high quality HD display and can control a variety of functions and of course uh, gives you things like maps as well as uh, whatever was operatable by the steering. The new thing here is this 10.1 inch display which is kind of built into the dashboard without a bezel. It's the touchscreen system, very intuitive to use and running Audi's latest MMI touchscreen infotainment system. Got all the users like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto but also has things like 
car information as well as wireless connectivity. The newest thing on the list is this screen down here, which replaces the entire button heavy uh, climate control and other user interface. It's actually a screen now and along with being having the ability to control the four zone climate control system, you can also adjust things like the hill descent and ascent control, the parktronic feature as well as switching on the hybrid function that turns off the car after 35 to 40 seconds if it's left idle. It's actually a really nice place to be in and given in European markets that the Q7 is a driver oriented vehicle, it looks like they've done a pretty decent job here. Now, given the Q7's size, positioning and status in the market, it's actually quite a popular option in the chauffeur-driven area. And in that respect, it's actually not a bad place to be, though it is missing a few features that we feel are essential when you're targeting buyers like that. In terms of what is available, you get a really good amount of headroom, legroom, even for someone of my size. And uh, you know, features here include the, these air vents with two dual zones. There's also a display shows you two USB Type-C ports with a 12 volt charging socket. You get a center armrest here with two integrated cup holders and the center occupant also gets a, a three point seat belt. This panoramic sunroof along with the giant glass house makes it a really nice space to be in. Now, uh, you know, given that it's targeted at the chauffeur driven market, uh, we expected a few more features. One being that the ability to control this passenger seat from the back so that you can move it backward and forward, probably seat massagers and uh, you know uh, your integrated media controls to control the screen from here, and that kind of thing. And uh, now with respect to these two screens, they replicate the infotainment system. And at the time of doing this video, uh, we still didn't have clarity as to whether this is a factory fitted option or it's from the dealer. But given that it has Audi branding, it is available for you to fit in the car one way or another. Now, given that the Audi Q, Q7 has three rows of seating, and you can call it like a seven seater, uh, you can see that it's not exactly a great space to be in with the second row fully up and the seat back in a sort of comfortable position. I'm more or less squatting in the back. And uh, you know, you can then think of this as an option or rather the difference between having to carry two more people or three more people in the vehicle than having to take a second vehicle if you're traveling somewhere in a large group. And it's a space best suited to short journeys for adults or can be used for kids. Room apart, there's not really much here. You only get two cup holders and three point seat belts, of course. With the third row up, the boot space is also not that great. But now these third row seats fold flat and you actually do get a lot of boot space inside. The fully loaded model that we are driving for the review today gets quite a few bells and whistles. This list includes the three screen system, four zone climate control, park plus, electric steering adjustment, ambient lighting, air suspension, wireless charging, memory function for the driver's seat, Bang & Olufsen sound system and matrix LED headlamps. On the safety front, both variants get eight airbags, lane departure warning with steering assist, as well as hill ascent and descent control. We have all the details listed out on this facelifted Q7 on Carwali, and you can find a link to the model page in the description below. Now, first things first, uh, powering this facelifted Audi Q7 is a 3-litre V6 petrol producing 340 bhp and uh, 500 nm of torque. There's a mild hybrid system as well as an 8-speed automatic transmission. It also gets Audi's legendary Quattro all-wheel drive system and that's standard for both the premium plus and the technology variants. This engine is actually quite refined and there's hardly any vibrations and unless you floor it, uh, it's only then that you can hear the V6 engine up front snarl. Otherwise, you know, combined with the uh, heavy NVH insulation that's available on a car of this size and price, it's uh, actually pretty quiet inside. Now on the go, there's a slight lag 
uh, in terms of you know when you press the throttle and the car gets going but once the car gets going momentum build up is pretty quick and you can be comfortably cruising really fast the 8 speed automatic transmission is actually quite intuitive as has become the case nowadays it's best if you just put it into d and leave it in the background to do its thing it ensures that you're always in the meat of the torque band and you know that 500 nm of torque is quite well spread out and you never feel the need for wanting more you know be it quick overtakes or just you know if you suddenly want to get cruising all you got to do is just dab the throttle and it gets going uh you also get paddle shifters which are like an you know uh, they're available as standard fitment with the car and if you want an involved driving experience then the paddle shifters do their job quite well they respond instantly when you choose them you even get a little bit of engine braking now uh, on the flip side you know with a large engine and things like that uh, this is not the most fuel efficient car and you know throughout the course of our test drive we've been getting between 5 and 7 kmpl and even with the gigantic fuel tank that this car has that's not particularly efficient but uh if you consider the kind of people that will buy this car fuel efficiency is generally lower on their uh, on their list of demands and so i i don't think that's really going to be an issue with this vehicle this uh, facelifted audi q7 is underpinned by an air suspension which you know when you raise it and get it going it makes the ride extremely supple if a bit soft and you know that softness is evident when you go over some really bad rut or imperfection and there's like a slight vertical movement inside the car but otherwise it just irons out everything in the process and it's actually really comfortable most of the time the steering is actually very responsive uh, oddly enough for a vehicle of this size in in two ways actually one is that at low speeds it does a very good job of masking the Q7 size it makes jobs like parallel parking and u turns and things like that uh, very easy but as you go faster it weighs up nicely and is quite accurate and that makes for a good highway driving experience adding to that highway driving experience is the V6's ability to give you uh, you know uh, ample amount of torque at just the right time to give you cruising ability and this combined with you know steering allows this to be uh the term we could use is a, a grand tour i mean that's rather dramatic but you know you'd be comfortable doing long distances in this car and really have no issues with driving it around now one of the things i mean that's pretty obvious is that this is a huge car with a high center of gravity and that is going to affect its you know handling ability and that's something very evident if you take corners hard or you know you're driving enthusiastically and for a vehicle of this size this kind of suspension setup that's kind of oriented at being comfortable you're better off planning your moves in advance and you know uh you know, break early and you know build your momentum and carry it into the turn to keep your pace constant rather than breaking in the last minute and attempting to then correct in case you're driving in an enthusiastic manner The Audi Q7 has been out of the limelight for quite a while. In fact, it's been missing in Audi's lineup since the implementation of BS6. Now it's back, and as you can see from our review, it's got uh, good features in this update, great cruising ability, and is tech-laden enough to induce people to want to have the full Audi experience. On the flip side, it's not particularly fuel efficient. The third row is more of an extra feature than a complete USP and it's missing some of the features that we expected that it would have targeting the chauffeur driven market. We expect Audi to price both versions of the Q7 in the range of rupees 1 crore to rupees 1.20 crore all India ex showroom. It is a rival for the likes of the Mercedes-Benz GLS, BMW X7 and the Range Rover Sport all three row SUVs. For all the details on the Audi Q7, do visit our website carwale.com. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.